Welcome to a brand new episode of CNB Bazaar Buzz. My name is Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. This is the NDTV Network. Thank you for joining us. We have plenty to get through today. Here's a look at what is on today's program. Google comes out with interesting findings about the online space and automobiles. The Suzuki GSX S750. And Kia gets the ball rolling in India. Trial production begins at its plant. So first, let's launch straight into it with that Google report. Now, it is a survey that's been carried out across the country in partnership with Kantar. And a lot of what it says is what we had already started to see, especially all of us at carandbike.com, where we've started to sense these trends. But of course, as you guessed it, most of the action when it comes to new car purchase, well, it's all moving online now. And that's exactly what's been endorsed by this report. What's interesting, though, is in the last year, a lot of the manufacturers are also now starting to make similar moves. King Shook has more details. Online is where the world is and online is where automotive manufacturers are nowadays building up a strong presence too. Social media and technology has empowered the customer and this is something that the auto companies understand as well. With more options and information at one's fingertips, an aspiring car buyer can get almost all the information on the internet before he or she actually steps inside a car dealership. And Google along with Kantar, a firm specializing in market research, has released a report which documents this exact phenomenon. Google says that there are about 4-5 to five steps in the average car buying process. First, of course, comes the intention to buy a new car, which is followed by research. Then the car buyer goes on to make a consideration set, which might have two to three options. After this comes the research and all the value addition that is created by auto manufacturers along with social media sites and advice from family and friends as well. About 64% of the car buyers start their research process offline, while 36% start their research process online. When it comes to online research, 47% of the people begin with the search engine, while 12% people want to first look at the videos of the cars in their consideration set. 14 and 15% people visit the manufacturer website and the dealership website respectively. The process is, is kind of the same, but what's really changed is the way the consumer is researching for his vehicle. And uh, today, a, a bulk of the research happens online. Uh, in fact, you know, the Google uh, gear shift report, at least the last one, indicated about uh, influence of upwards of, I think, close to about 90%, right? Uh, and of course, channels like search and, and, and uh, display and videos play a, a very critical role. So while the process of hunting for a vehicle remains the same, Research has moved online and as a consequence of the research, finally the consumer, he or she makes a choice to walk into a showroom, uh, take a test drive and, and, and then next steps, right? Uh, and what's, what's also changed is the number of showrooms that the consumer is walking into. He's walking into lower number of showrooms versus prior. So that's, that's kind of some of the changes that's happening right now. After the initial research comes the consideration list. The report says that 80% of the respondents were first-time car buyers and about 57% people weren't brand loyal, meaning they were ready to buy a car from a different manufacturer than their last one. About 67% of the new car buyers take about two months from initial research for the final purchase and 20% take less than two weeks for the same process. About 90% of the respondents said that they went online for information at some point in the buying process and about 87% researched on their smartphones, indicating smartphones are an important touchpoint. The biggest touchpoint for offline research is family and friends, constituting about 66% of the total offline research. 
Yeah, I mean, in terms of key highlights, um, you know, almost uh, 90 percent of the people who are in in the zone of buying a car uh, start the journey on uh, search. Uh, 80 percent of them actually use YouTube to watch videos and uh, get more information. Uh, in fact, the number has moved in the last two years from about 46 percent to 80 percent. Uh, and third, most important that we are really looking at is the um, role that uh, uh, you know consumers and prospect consumers are, are playing in terms of going to the brand sites and dealer sites, which is about 56 percent. So there is a lot more activity in terms of engagement to finding out more information. Uh, what we are also uh, looking at really is that uh, uh, the nature of um, uh, information that is being sought uh, is actually becoming deeper, more wider. Um, because consumers are a lot more, um, uh, I think, empowered. They're curious, they're inquisitive, uh, and they want information at every touch point of the consumer buying uh, journey, which has come out very strongly in this report. There's no doubting the importance of videos in today's car purchase decisions. About 82% of first-time car buyers watch videos online during their research of the consideration set. 80% of the new car buyers too have seen online videos to facilitate their decision-making process. Apart from the usual sources of information such as dealership, online sites, videos, etc., buyers today appreciate digital tools such as online car configurator, price and EMI calculator, total cost of ownership calculator and so on. People are also quite receptive to the idea of a 360-degree virtual reality tour of the car and 54% say that a virtual reality video could possibly replace a test drive as well. You have to really look at uh, digitization in a 360 approach. Now the first thing is obviously in your product you have to be completely connected. Yeah? So customers today spending a lot of time in their cars yeah, want to be seamlessly connected to their friends via their social media platforms. Yeah? Mm -hmm. They want to use their, their um, mobile devices on a constant basis in their cars. Yeah? They want to have a predictable um, dr uh, driving journey. Yeah? So yeah. when you're driving and you have a traffic jam, you automatically are the, the, uh, the routed. Yeah? Um, so it's really the product as such has to be completely connected and digitalized. Then the complete sales and service journey has to be digitalized. Yeah? Okay. And the way how the people are interacting, always with the purpose not to be fancy, okay. the purpose of really helping and having a simpler experience for the customers. Yeah. Yeah? Even with all the technology, the final purchase always happens at a dealership where one takes delivery of the car. But even then, people usually go online to search for the location of the dealership as well. In fact, about 60% of people researched online to find the dealership. 69% of the new car buyers decide the final model only after one test drive. Online auto findings from Google and with that we move on now to the Suzuki GSX S750. Bit of a mouthful and of course there's lots to get you through on this bike. It's more than just eye candy as we found out. It is one of the most affordable motorcycles in India which has an inline four-cylindered engine. Yes, it is the Suzuki GSX S750. The Suzuki GSX S750 is one heck of a looker. The fat vascular tank with the plastic shrouds, the fat front forks that you see here, the really angular headlamp, all of these give this a nice, really raw sex appeal. You can't miss it on the road. Also, the design is very, very similar to the elder sibling, which is the GSX S1000 and that is not a bad thing at all. The GSX S750 has the exact persona of an angry bull waiting to charge at you, stomping its feet on the ground. This is a rare jap which doesn't have dull in its dictionary. The rear section too is sharp with a raised rear seat and capped off with a smart looking LED tail lamp. The bigger Suzuki motorcycles that are on sale in India are raw in nature. The GSX S750 is one such motorcycle too. All it gets is ABS which has 8 settings and a 3-step traction control that can be turned off. 
The front forks are 41mm Kayaba units and the brake calipers are from Nissin which grip the twin 310mm discs up front and a single unit at the rear. Not quite top shelf parts but they do the job well. You do get a full LCD instrumentation console on the bike. The GSX S750 gets a 749cc inline 4 cylinder motor that makes about 112.6 brake horsepower and 81 Newton meters of peak torque. All of that power and torque is transferred to the rear wheel with the help of a slick 6 speed gearbox. Now it might not seem a lot. Some of the other motorcycles in the same segment offer more power and torque, but the USP here is how the power is delivered. Till about 5000 RPMs, things are nice and easy. You be gentle with the throttle and the motorcycle moves forward in a predictable, almost docile manner, always complemented by the nice intake howl. And even at those revs, the exhaust starts belting out a lovely number. The engine itself is so refined and smooth that there isn't the barest hint of vibration anywhere on the body. Twist the throttle hard let the revs climb up freely and it is then that the motorcycle gets into its true being and the exhaust starts reaching a crescendo matched by the brutal acceleration. The GSX S750 tips the scales at 215 kilograms which is kind of portly for its segment. You do feel the weight and heft when riding in peak traffic. Handling is sharp and the suspension is taut but supple enough to absorb a few undulations on the road. The GSX S750 is perhaps the most practical, likeable motorcycle that you could buy in the naked middleweight segment in India. It tolls performance by the bucket full, has killer looks and what makes the deal even sweeter is the price. At 7,46,000 rupees, it is one of the more affordable inline 4 motorcycles that you can lay your hands on. The smooth, refined nature of this bike makes for great rideability and there's enough performance on tap to make every ride very, very enjoyable. A lot that's expected to happen in the year 2019 in the automobile space the onset of the electric vehicle revolution, well, perhaps at least in small measure, but also the arrival of two new brands. We're talking about Kia and MG. Both have already fired a few salvos with MG talking about Hector, its first product. Well, Kia showed us the prototype of its first product, the SP2i, which will probably be called the Tracer. And it's also begun the trial production of that car in Anantpur. Now, remember, we took you down to Anantpur to show you the construction a few months ago. It's all happening at lightning speed, well ahead of schedule. Samir Contractor was there. Set to enter the Indian market later this year, Kia Motors began trial production at its newly constructed Anandpur manufacturing facility in Andhra Pradesh. The trial production was inaugurated by the state chief minister N. Chandrababu Naidu in the presence of the Kia president and CEO Hanbu Park, managing director Ku Kyu Shem and the South Korean ambassador to India Shan Bonke. The Anandpur facility is the company's 15th manufacturing plant globally and the construction was completed within just 16 months. Well, the district of Anandpur in Andhra Pradesh has completely transformed with the Kia plant coming here. Well, over a year later, what you see behind me is an investment of $1.1 billion and this facility will be producing over 300,000 vehicles per annum. Kia says that over 400,000 vehicles can be produced if there is a demand for it. And sure, there will be because Kia will not only cater to the demand in India, but also overseas with the exports planned from this plant itself. Spread over 536 acres, the Anandpur plant employs up to 3,000 personnel directly, while over 7,000 employees have been recruited indirectly under its operations. The facility incorporates over 300 robots automating the press, body, paint shops, while there is also a training facility to promote skill development. 
So we can produce three lakh vehicles here. In case I can get it from one model, then so be it, or two, or three, or four. In any case, we have planned for four or five models within a period of two, two and a half years. So we will aim to utilize the capacity mainly for the Indian market within this time. The first product to roll out from India will be the SP2i compact SUV and we got a glimpse of the upcoming offering at the factory's newly built test track. The Kia SP2i is the production version of the SP concept that was showcased at the 2018 Auto Expo. The SUV shares its underpinnings with the Hyundai Creta. The Kia offering though will be positioned at a premium in the fast growing segment. This market, this segment is growing very rapidly also, 15.1%. So there is possibly room for all. So once we see an attractive vehicle coming in, I mean the entire market also expands there. So we don't see any problem there. We, we, we feel that the Indian market is big enough to accommodate uh, more players also, provided they come out with attractive, good vehicles, value for money vehicles for the customers. Promoting local infrastructure for electrical vehicles, Kia also handed over the Seoul EV to the Andhra Pradesh government at the trial production ceremony. Well, I am inside the Kia Soul electric vehicle that has just been handed over to the Andhra Pradesh government at the Anandpur plant. Well, this is the second such electric vehicle that was uh, handed over to the Andhra Pradesh government, the first one being the Nero EV. Well, what really makes this special is this the, is the 2020 version that was introduced late last year and it is one such vehicle that will be given to the state government here. It has over 200 bhp of power. Well, the range is an exceptional 450 kilometers, so you know it is uh, one of the more practical cars to have in the EV segment. Well, it's one of the, it's just a one-off for now and uh, Kia hasn't really said if it's bringing this model, this very specific model at that, to the Indian market, but you can expect Kia to roll out electric vehicles for India by 2025. Kia will be revealing the production specs SP2i compact SUV by April this year, while commercial production will commence in the second half of 2019. Bookings for the SUE will begin around August with the launch just before the festive season of Diwali. With that, it's a wrap on CNB Bazaar Buzz. You've got to tell us what you think of everything you've seen. Are you excited about Kia's arrival? Well, all of that and more. Please react to it. Also, the Google story. Please wear your seatbelts, wear your helmets. Bye bye.